Uh, th well, actually, I'm talking about this. Um, okay. <laughs> there seems well, to be some, some slight confusion over the, the titles on the slides. It's true. This is what I'm discussing with you, um, universal basic income. And I have some questions for you uh, relating to non-sovereign currencies, which I'll come to in a moment. Um, but thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to have been invited here to discuss basic income um, with what must be an intelligent audience. Um, I don't understand cryptocurrencies. I, I assume you all do. Um, I do understand basic income, so that's what I'm here to talk about. So when we discuss something, we need to know what it is we are discussing. And this is particularly important in this field because there are, there's a variety of interpretations of what a basic income is. So we have to start somewhere. And here is the definition that's published by BN, the Basic Income Earth Network, established in 1986. It is the... Uh, international organization that facilitates the global debate on basic income. And this is its published definition of a basic income, a periodic cash payment unconditionally delivered to all on an individual basis without means test or work requirement. Uh, if it helps, we can simplify that. It's an unconditional income for everyone. That's what a basic income is. It has a variety of names, basic income, universal basic income, citizen's income, citizen's basic income, demogrant, social dividend. They all mean the same thing. A basic income, a periodic cash payment, unconditionally delivered to all on an individual basis without means test or work requirement. That is what we are discussing this morning. It's important to distinguish between a basic income and a basic income scheme. A basic income is always what I've just described. A basic income scheme is a basic income, a genuine one, with the amount specified for each age group because it can differ for each age group. The funding method fully specified, any changes to existing tax and benefit systems and so on, all carefully specified. And obviously, if it's going to be paid in some different kind of currency. That has to be carefully specified. A basic income scheme tells us what you would actually do when you implemented your basic income. Here are BN's clarifications of that definition, because a simple definition is, is only a starting point, of course. It, the basic income has to be periodic, not just a one-off grant. It's every month, every week. It's a genuine, regular income for everyone. It has to be in cash, paid in an appropriate medium of exchange. This is how it's defined, allowing those who receive it to decide what they spend it on. It's, it provides freedom. That's one of the reasons it has to be a cash payment. It's individual, not paid to a household. Every individual gets it into their own bank account. It's universal, paid to all and it's unconditional. There are no requirements at all. There is some debate around BN. Um, and we have had a working party um, on the definition and how it's to be clarified in the future. And one of the important issues that's been raised by that working group is whether we should add a sixth clarification, that is, it's uniform. The same amount every week and every month because the definition itself isn't actually clear on that point. This debate goes on. As do many other debates about the definition of basic income, it is a hot subject of debate permanently among those involved in the global debate. Here are some variants of basic income. I'm going to talk about variants and alternatives. It's important to distinguish between them. Variants of basic income mean we might pay it at different amounts. So a variant would be a relatively small basic income or quite a large basic income. Different periods, once a week, once a month, these are variants of basic income. 
different funding methods. And so if you were to fund a genuine basic income through a cryptocurrency mechanism, then that would be a variant of basic income, as long as it fulfilled the basic income definition. There are de different definitions of what to all means. Um, within a country, there are a variety of definitions of who a citizen might be, who a legal resident might be, and so on. This is all very country-specific. And so there are variants in relation to precisely who would receive it. Um, but in general, we expect every legal resident in a country to receive the basic income. Now, I'm going to discuss with you some alternatives to basic income. These are not basic incomes. They are alternatives. They are sometimes confused with basic income, which is why I'm going to mention them to you. Here they are. A minimum income guarantee is not a basic income. It's a statement that every household will reach a particular income level at the end of the year or whatever the period might be. And a number of United States and Canadian experiments going on at the moment are with minimum income guarantees. And the 1970s quite well-known experiments in the United States and Canada were for a minimum income guarantee and not a basic income. Um, we can discuss that later if you wish. A recent experiment in Ontario was for a household-based and income-tested benefit, not a basic income. You can see that it doesn't match the definition. It's unfortunate that the Ontario government called it a basic income experiment when it wasn't one. Now, it doesn't mean we can't learn a lot from it. We have. It was a valuable experiment, but definitions matter. Another alternative is a participation income. This was an idea from Professor Tony Atkinson initially back in the 1990s. That is, people should get their income if they participate in society in some way. That's to establish a condition on the basis of which it will be paid. So if you hear a participation income mentioned, it's not a basic income. A negative income tax is, is exactly what it says it is. If you, if you are paying income tax, you are paying tax on any earned income above a threshold. If you earn less than that threshold, a negative income tax will pay you a proportion of the amount by which your earnings fall below that threshold. It creates a straight line relationship between earned income and net income, and therefore is sometimes confused with the basic income. But its administration is radically different, and it is not a basic income. Tax credits, very similar to a negative income tax. The US earned income tax credit is run on quite a complicated formula, which I'll explain if anybody wants to know. Um, it's not a basic income. The basic income guarantee is a bit of a problem because it can mean almost anything. You will sometimes see this term used, particularly in the United States, if you're from there or from Canada. And it's a slight problem because it can mean all of these different things. Um, this is from a, an American academic who worked out how many different things are meant by the term basic income guarantee. It's a vast category. So, you now know what a basic income is. You've, we've discussed some variants, that is, there are different ways of implementing a basic income. And you've, you've heard about some alternatives that are not basic incomes. So let's now return to a genuine basic income and ask if it's feasible. First of all, can we pay for it? So, that's about financial feasibility. And I'll come to that again in a minute. There is a second financial feasibility, and that is, will any low-income households lose money? This is an important point. If you were to fund a basic income by imposing a higher tax rate on lower earned incomes, then in people with, in poverty may end up in deeper poverty. If you were to fund your basic income by abolishing existing means tested benefits, for instance, then low-income households might end up in deeper poverty. It's very important that we don't do that, and so there are two separate financial feasibility questions to be answered. 
administrative feasibility. We have to be able to provide the income to everyone. And so the question is, is the database available for doing that? In the UK, where I'm from, it does not exist. At the present time, we could not pay to every individual a basic income. There are other countries where you can. And it's always interested me that somewhere like India would actually be relative, be, be perhaps first off the block with the basic income because it has a much better record of its citizens. And, and other European countries do as well. Um, behavioural feasibility is would the basic income do what we hope it will do? Will it provide economic security? Will it provide social cohesion? Will it create greater equality, less poverty, less inequality and so on? It's a test we can only pass after we've done it. Obviously, we have good reason for thinking it will have all those effects. It will provide the kind of freedom that people need and so on. Um, but will it do it? We'll have to wait and see. Psychological feasibility. Do people know what it is and think it's a good idea? It's a really important feasibility test. And I won't go into that in great detail. You can probably see how much that matters. Political feasibility, does this fit with the political ideologies around in your countries at the time? Um, that's an important feasibility test. A government would have to pass it. So would one be willing to do so? And even more important, could it get through the policy process? This is the separate question to political feasibility. Does the policy process enable the idea to navigate its way through com complex institutions to implementation? Going back to financial feasibility, there is now a considerable research literature on um, the feasibility of basic income uh, in terms of its, its financial feasibility tests, both of them. And this is a micro-simulation program that we use called Euromod. You may have come across it, um, which has coded into it all of the regulations for the tax and benefit system of a country. And uh, we pass through it the family uh, resource survey data, which is a vast data set of real-world information about household finances. And we can say that on the basis of our research that in the UK it would be feasible to invent a basic income scheme that would be financially feasible, that would not tip lower income households into deeper poverty, that would reduce poverty, reduce inequality, take a lot of people off means tested benefits. It is feasible. We could do it if a government wanted to. Um, and so if you want to have a look, it's the Centre for Microsimulation and Policy Analysis at the University of Essex, which does this work. Now, here are my questions for a cryptocurrency audience. Now that you have seen what a basic income is, and uh, we've discussed some of the issues raised by it, um, the, I've tried to understand blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. I don't well yet. Um, I know all you do. Uh, this is your world, and I'm speaking into a world that is not my world. Um, so I hope that you will evaluate these questions on that basis. Um, but these are the questions that have been raised for me as I have attempted to study uh, your world. Um, a basic income, according to the definition, is feasible if it's paid in a sovereign currency as it can be paid reliably to all within a particular jurisdiction at regular intervals in cash, and so can be spent on anything anywhere, to individuals at the same amount every week or every month unconditionally. And we have shown in the UK that it would be perfectly feasible to do that. We could implement a basic income in sovereign currency in the UK uh, that fulfilled the definition and pass the feasibility tests. So, would it be possible to pay a basic income in an alternative currency, these are the questions for you, to all within a particular jurisdiction, to individuals, every individual, not just households or just some people, at regular intervals, once a week or once a month, able to be spent on anything, anywhere, at the same amount, every week or every month, 
and unconditionally? Those are the questions that arose for me as I was attempting to study blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Um, you may want to discuss those questions. Whether we'll have time in five minutes, I don't know. Um, but I shall stop in a minute. If anybody's interested, here are some books. Uh, here's The History of Basic Income, um, published by Edward Elgar last year. Um, here's a, a modern guide to uh, citizens' basic income, as, as Edward Elgar publishers called it. It's a multidisciplinary approach. If you're interested in feasibility, there's this one, published by Paul Grave Macmillan. And there's some more books on the, on the website that you can see there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was certainly illuminating. I didn't think we realized uh, we had such an established, published author between us. Um, I think in blockchain, as we attempt to understand basic concepts before they go onto the blockchain, um, it's existential. We get their basic definitions right. And this has been a great first start. So if there's any questions in the audience, blockchain or not, um, you have an OG in the house today. Here's my the questions. opportunity <laughs> to ask Malcolm any questions that you may have. Th these are questions debates. for you, not me. These are questions. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. This could be a discussion. I'll answer whatever questions you have. Yeah. Also be a discussion. Please. I'd rather have a question to the audience and alike also the presenter, because I would wonder what's your take at um, that definitions matter and how to interpret points that might not perfectly fit into the narrative of a decentralized autonomous organization, especially when talking about jurisdictions. So who knows an answer? The better, way to put, the, better way to, the better way to put it is who is open for discourse. Yes. yes. I'm around all day if anybody wants to carry on these discussions, of course. Um, so uh, do please come and find me and, and talk to me if you'd like to. Um, I, if you want my initial answer um, to that, definitions really matter because if you're not all meaning the same thing by the same terms, um, then you're then you may not be communicating. Um, that's why definitions matter. Um, they really do matter. They matter particularly in one of the fields that I'm involved in, which is the micro-simulation field for proving the feasibility of, of proposed basic income schemes. Um, because if researchers aren't using the same definition, then you're researching different things, and people will not understand your um, research reports. And so research reports really do have to start with a clear definition. Now, if somebody wants to mean something else by basic income from what the, the end definition is, in one sense, of course, that's fine. Everyone has a right to their own definition, um, so long as they say what it is. So I'm perfectly happy if people want to say basic income is this, not that, as long as they tell me what they think it is. I think we have a question. I, I can comment or kind of try to answer the question. I, I would say... Um, that's yeah, totally possible. All all those things, um, and I think the the only the only part where it's maybe um, yeah uh, it differs is exactly what what you said. So I mean, first, blockchain is is a simple uh, technology. So um, if a state wants wants to do it, a state can do it, and there might be reasons to use uh, blockchain, but a state can of course do it without a blockchain. Um, I think the interesting part. And, 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 and all those things can totally be done on a blockchain, absolutely. State yeah. can, I could, imagine that they probably could, could, could immediately chose to, yeah. Right, so I think the, the interesting part that is possible and was maybe previously not really possible is that you can now do it potentially without a state. Um, and, 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 and then you would probably... Uh, at least in this definition, yeah, you would probably not be targeted at a particular jurisdiction, but um, yeah, so, some w whatever network uh, or whatever uh, way of how kind of people can join or verify. There, there are, are a big variation um, of that, but yeah. So I would say the jurisdiction is the only thing that um, it's probably really new that it could be uh, across or, or beyond jurisdictions. I can see that. 
Um, maybe that's something that people want to discuss later on. Yeah. Yes, I think um, related to the jurisdiction, I think we have a moral responsibility to uh, disobey unjust laws. And uh, basic income is actually a human right. So if governments don't implement it, we can take that responsibility for them. And um, I think blockchain technology is great because we can do it now. And uh, we just pass the government. I think um, for Malcolm, who's a fan of books, um, there is also a book that was produced by Biology recently, The Network State, that basically talks about the lines of geopolitical networks, nation states, um, coinciding in the network property. And you can have an internet network of people who associate with a certain state that could derive from a certain faucet of income yeah. that does not eat into any government coffers, has no politics associated, and is com truly decentralized. Yeah. So I think there is research in this space, but it is really early. And so it really helps to go back to basics and understand these concepts. Yes, but I, all I would ask is that the, the part of the definition that says to all um, is taken seriously. Because, to take the UK as an example, um, most people have bank accounts. Some people do not. Most people know how to use electronics. They can use computers, they can use phones. Quite a lot of people cannot. The question is, is it, is it possible to use blockchain technology to ensure that the basic income is paid genuinely to all? Um, because if not, then there is going to be um, a new injustice. And I, I think that we do need to take that really seriously. If you can solve that problem, it'd be terrific. Sounds good. Anybody else before we wind down and move to our next talk? Yeah, um, from my point of view, it's difficult to give it to all because in blockchain you still have to sign up, you have to participate. If you don't voluntarily start participating, then you will also not be able to get the income, from my point of view. It's impossible. If you don't make a wallet, if you don't sign up, there's no way to do it. So like, that's something that would have to be done. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not possible. And on, there's other two points, which I think are a little bit difficult with blockchain. It's like, to be able to spend it on anything, anywhere, mm -hmm. you still have to accept it. You know, if this is not possible, if a, a shop says they don't accept it, you can't change it. You know, like if they don't believe in it yeah. or they don't I, want to use it. Yeah. I am conscious, of course, that that's a chicken and egg problem. If everybody in a jurisdiction had a, a basic income in a particular currency, then shops would start to take it. I mean, so, so you're looking at a circular process there, aren't you, I think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the, the problem is with the, at the same amount every week or month, every month, so like you would have to then keep the, this token, the blockchain token, you have to keep it stable with a yes. stable amount. Yes, I, that's, that's, I'm conscious how unstable problem. currencies currently are. Yeah, I mean, you are blockchain. kind of always bound to some of the larger currencies, so like if they change in value, then everything changes. But yeah, theoretically, you can do it, but I think the, in practice, there are still all of these problems that you have to yeah. solve. I'm hoping that you are going to solve these problems. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's all we have time for. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.